Okay, hey everybody, uh, it's Vince with Green Joe Coffee Truck, and I wanted to uh, throw out some of the emails that I've been um, uh, sharing with some of the people that bought my ebook and stuff. Uh, a couple questions, just kind of throw it out there so that everyone has the answers to it. Uh, so, this question comes from Matt. Um, it's a question about wattage and power consumption with a generator. Uh, he says, So, the machine that I'm looking at is a Luca A53. It's a direct connect, which means the um, the uh, water gets plugged into city or into your um, water tanks. Um, it has a rated steam boiler power of 1250 watts and a brew boiler power of 800 watts. It's my understanding that the max power I will require for this will be 1850, but I'm not sure if that's correct. So that would be that would be incorrect. That would be incorrect. And let me tell you why. So you have two boilers going on, right? Keep in mind espresso machines put out two sets of temperature. The first set of temperature, I keep looking down here. The first set of temperature <laughs> is uh, the steamer. Okay? And so uh, the steamer, you have to bring your your water temperature above boiling to create steam. So that boiler it's under pressure that way when you open up the valve, the steam comes bursting out so it's above 212 degrees okay and so usually these things are set at 240 degrees 260 degrees and as soon as you open it boom the steam comes blasting out so that's one set of temperature in an espresso machine and the other set of temperature is within um, the the uh, brew head and so your actual puck where you uh, where you attach your group head so when you attach your group head that comes out at 200 degrees so you're looking at a good 40 degree difference in terms of the two different temperatures um, one which you draw espresso from and the other which you uh, you get your steam power from so two different temperatures in this particular machine because it has a a steam boiler and then it also has a brew boiler means that you have you have two boilers inside your system and so one boiler is 1250 watts uh, the other boiler is 800 watts you have to combine that for your total consumption so you my friend are looking at uh, what is that 2050 watts total during your peak consumption now once it gets that steam up to temp then it doesn't require as much wattage to keep it to temp until you drop your load, until you use a significant amount of steam in which that heating element is going to kick back on and start drawing power from your generator again. Um, so, so that's what's going on with that one. So he's got a, uh, basically what Matt's running is a, it's a coffee bike and he's trying to see what he can, he can run his machine on this, on this coffee bike. So Matt's going to need um, kind of um, as small a machine as possible to be functional since it's going to be on a bike. So what I would what I would recommend to Matt is rather than get a two boiler system where you have a boiler for your steam and then a boiler for your uh, brew head, I would recommend getting a one boiler system with a heat exchanger. And what a heat exchanger is, is basically imagine that you have this big cylinder, your boiler, right? You have your boiler and uh, your boiler is going to be, you know, come up to temperature, let's say 240 degrees. Well, within that boiler is a coil, or, you know, some of them are a coil, some are just a, a piping within the actual boiler. And in that piping, uh, water flows through and gets heated up and then comes out. They call that a heat exchanger. So you have the boiler, and then you have this piping that runs in and then back out again without ever exchanging water into the boiling system, okay? And what that does is as the water passes through that piping and comes back out again, it's heated up, and it's heated up at a different temperature. So the heat exchangers um, allow you to have one boiler but two temperatures. It's a more efficient use of, of your wattage. And what that will allow you to do is be able to drop your wattage, not have to run two boilers. Now, the disadvantage to that, right? Everything has its pros and its cons. The disadvantage to having one boiler is that anytime someone draws up like an Americano, for example, which is going to be 16 ounces of hot water, it's going to drop that single boiler tank and you're going to need to recover it. Versus if you had two separate boilers, um, you're not going to take as much of an impact because 
Because you have two separate boilers. You have more resources, essentially. So whenever someone orders an Americano, it's not going to hit your tank as hard because you have two tanks that you're going to be you're going to be pulling from, so to speak. I mean, it gets a little bit more detailed than that, but that's pretty much how it, how it runs. So I think for, for Matt particularly, because he's on a coffee bike, he would be better off with, uh, with running um, a heat exchanger on his espresso machine. So look into uh, espresso machines um, with a heat exchanger and, uh, and try to get something as close as you can to about 2,000 watts. And I think you're going to get some good, pretty good juice out of that. Um, so Matt and I talked back and forth. Um, let's see, one of the things that I said, oh, other things to keep in mind is that um, when you have longer extension cords, then uh, you're going to drop your wattage out of your generator. So, you know, we were kind of talking back and forth. I said, look, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have a smaller extension cord because if if you're having to run power through that entire line and you got this you know let's say a 50 foot line of cord then uh, you know the generators gotta fill up all that power so you're gonna drop wattage along the way um, how much wattage I'm, I don't know exactly um, I know that the shorter the cord the better so to speak um, so you know he was wondering hey would I be able to uh, to get away with getting a 2000 watt generator no I don't think you're gonna have much of a chance on that one Matt I think what you're gonna need to do is either get a bigger generator or drop your wattage out of your espresso machine on which I would encourage getting a bigger generator because you'll want some espresso machine power um, all right let's uh so the next question we had was Let's see. Okay, so this this is again he's working on his bike. So it's another question involving the bike, and uh, basically it's the question about uh, can your your twelve volt battery. So he says currently there's a twelve volt battery on the bike that powers the water pump and the canopy lights. Awesome. Um, he's got a solar panel up there. He says, here's the Colorado code I have to comply with. Uh, adequate water pressure must be provided at all fixtures at all times. Okay, so that can be done. Minimum flow rate of one gallon per minute. Okay, it's pretty simple. Most of your 12 volts will take care of that pretty easily. Uh, your 12 volt pumps, excuse me. Um, water heating system should be adequate to fill the wear washing sink with 110 degree water without interruptions and to supply the hand sink and the with three gallons per hour of 100 degree water at all times. So what that means is you're going to have to have a continuous supply of hot water, which on that little generator is not going to be easy. Um, you know, it looks like he's asking if you can do it off a of 12 volt. I, I don't think so. I think you're really going to struggle finding anything 12 volt that's going to supply um, a heating element like a water heater. You know, if, if I were in your shoes, probably what I would look into is a tankless water heater. You can use a propane tank um, to heat the tankless water heater. The reason I like tankless is um, because you're not going to have to fill a reservoir like a, a traditional uh, gas, uh, excuse me, a traditional water heater it usually has like a big tank, like a three gallon tank. You'll find these in RVs and stuff. And, um, and so it's got to fill up and there's a certain rate in which you have to resupply in order to meet this three gallon code that he has and you know when they sell you these tanks it tells you you know okay we can supply this much hot water over this much you know it has all the, the information on the specs and so when you're doing your research you gotta look up like you know the spec graph and you dig into it and you go okay does this supply enough hot water to meet the demands that my inspector is uh, is, is looking for in inspectors may or may not get that detailed with a hot water heater you know for all you know they may just turn on I can't tell you how many times I've been inspected and that's all they do is they turn on the hot water put their hand under it and they go okay is it hot you know that's what I see a lot of inspectors do I've probably been inspected maybe I don't know seven or eight times um, for my yearly ins my yearly inspections I get two a year and then on-site inspections are uh, countless I, I can't tell you how many times I've been inspected on-site by the health uh, department at like a big uh, venue or something, you know, do festivals, they'll come in and one of the first things they look at is do I have test strips for chlorine for my triple sinks, can I wash my hands, do I have hot water, 
and they want to look at my cold temp holding so they'll look at my fridge and how I'm maintaining my milk blah 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 okay <laughs> anyways going back to the water heater um, 12 volt you're not gonna find any juice I mean you're gonna have to have a series of 12 volts I don't think it's possible I mean maybe but um, you know I think by the time you convert your batteries into AC current to charge your water heater, you're going to lose power inside that conversion. When you invert the power, you're going to lose it. You're going to drop 25% at best. Um, and so now you're dealing with 75% of your battery power into your heating coil. And it's just, it's not a, a recipe for success. So your best bet, uh, I think, would be switching over to propane for your water heater. Um, it, you'll have to look into your propane code to find out if that's going to be worth your headache. You may um, need to just go to a water heater that's 110 volts and run it off your generator. Um, but, you know, going back to that generator, if we can keep that thing unstressed and put more of its power into um, the espresso machine, then you get more profitability over the long run because you get a little bit more bang for your buck out of your machine versus taking this generator and kind of stretching it through a water heater, a coffee pot, and an espresso machine. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to dedicate as much power as I can to the espresso machine so that you can make some, make some fucking money, you know what I mean? Like, sling some beans, you know? Um, so anyhow, so that's, I would probably go to propane on that one. I think I would. I think I would see if I can get a propane tank. And if I can't get a propane, then, then the last resort is going to be as small of a tank I can to meet that capacity, the three gallons. Um, as small as a, a tank as I can, and so that I, I don't pull as much power from my generator. Anyhow, um, so this is a bunch of questions. Matt, hope this helps. Thank you for buying my book. You're awesome. If you guys want to buy my book, you're interested in looking into coffee trucking. Um, we are the only resource online when it comes to coffee trucking. Plenty on food trucks, but food trucks suck. Well, they don't suck. I like tacos. Um, but as far as coffee trucking, we're the, we're the number one resource for uh for coffee trucking you can get my book uh on my website it is www.greenjoecoffeetruck.com forward slash ebook i'll throw that link below um, smash that subscribe button so you see more of this stuff in your future and you stay on track to your goals uh, make sure you hit the like button that helps generate more uh, virility so that other people can see this there are other baristas out there that they want to get their groove on to um, so yeah, uh, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. I try to get to the comments, guys. I do. I don't always get to the comments because the people who buy my A-book, they get first priority. Um, so, you know, but yeah, if you have questions, throw them down there in the comments and I'll, and, and I really hope to get them. Anyways, Vince with Green Joe, thank you so much.